even in bros and non bros a lot of action to pick up in the market and digest nasty little dump at the open in tech stocks that is was probably to be expected there was a, a gentleman a hack artist hack analyst those guy at Goldman Ball Sachs and another guy at Morgan Stanley who both kind of came out with basically some market downgrades and said like hey we're a little bit overheated the Goldman Sachs guy basically said like you know we're at the tail end of uh, a big run and the Morgan Stanley guy was more referring to 2024 both of them are cucks anyway so I don't I wouldn't read too much into it the market came into support and had a nice rebound uh, into the afternoon in the end, price is the only thing that pays. We are a little bit frothy. There's no getting around it. But there's a lot of good action to be had. And this is what you want to see. Like when stocks take, you know, big morning pulls. And the market was down in the QQQs at one point, about 1.7 to 1.8%, which is a, a very big pullback. What you want to see in markets is when the ATR is used up, on the downside do you actually rebound do bear flags turn into longs that's always the telltale sign of bullish markets when bear flags become longs always remember that like when bear flags become longs, right so like historically right this like kind of pattern would be like a makeshift bear flag right this kind of pattern right would be like these kind of dumps in the sideways consolidation would be bear flags when the bear flags turn into bull flags or into longs i should say that's usually a bullish market environment. So the Qs is on some support. I do anticipate probably the large caps to be a little bit choppy into the year. Big funds, big money are sitting on probably massive, massive gains on right the, the hedge fund hotels of NVIDIA and Meta and so many of these things. You know, who knows? Maybe they sell off, they book their gains. I'm not exactly sure, but we have seen a little bit of change in character in these particular names. The mid caps and the other names, right? The non-magnificent sevens have been the way to go. So I think that that's just something to kind of keep it to the back of the head as we start going in to the rest of December. Now let's take a couple looks. So first of all, the QQQs is sitting on support. I don't think this thing is gonna come crashing down. Uh, but sometimes you just got to relive, re blow off some steam. And you see that, right? You're getting 50-day moving average tests in Meta. This will be on watch for potential bounce tomorrow. And then we've got ourselves, right, a 50-day moving average test on NVIDIA. We'll see if these bounce off tomorrow. Not for more than a one- or two-day type of play. But we do got the oversold bounce setup that's actually happening in here. Um, I think that this is going to be probably... Uh, pretty you got 16 statistics on this right and if you look at meta you've got a 23 so you got a good kind of five six percent pullback in these names they probably do oversold bounces tomorrow and then we'll kind of see what's up uh in them but i'd be surprised if any of them break out to highs the rest of the year but on the other side right you had awesome strength in the iwm again this is the type of action that you want to see so if you look at the iwm in the morning, you know, we were messing around with this. We were messing around with this all day. But if you see in the morning, like this is the, your classic bull market action, right? So you have this big trender the previous day. And then you dip off right off into the open. See that? Like you dip off right off into the open. See, when you get that and you immediately go red to green, that's bullish. A lot of times, like after such a big trend day, you start farting around and farting around and it chops everybody up in the morning. And then once everybody throws in the towel like midday, you start to see the market kind of grind its way back. This was an immediate red to green and then a retest and then a go. That is classic bull market tactics right there. We've got to respect that kind of price action. Could we get a pull tomorrow? Possibly, yeah, we're going to... You know, if we gapped up tomorrow, it'd be a day three of a movie. You'd probably get a, a small poll or something like that. But once again, once they're once we're having intraday dumps and they go sideways, those bear flags turn into long. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. But the big thing is beyond just the indexes, right? You have to look at how individual stocks are acting. 
right? How many stocks are showing up on your scan? So like for example, we run a liquid gainer scan here. This scan has normally 50 to 60 names on it. Today there's 257 names in the watch list. Right on that specific scan, not on my specific watch list, but on that specific scan. That's a lot. Like if you look here, like even the stocks that move made five percent moves or more, eighty-five of them. Right. So on all, on all measures, right, we have a tremendous amount of strength going up. Four hundred four percent break that breakouts, thousand the day before. Right, and very few breakdowns. <clears throat> this is. This is the whole shebang right here, right? This is the kind of move we've been waiting for. Now we are getting a little bit frothy. The T2108, usually when it gets in the 80 spot, often will pull back in the market. You can go sideways for periods of time here, right? So it's not a one-off thing, but that's something we'll have to keep an eye on. If, if the market doesn't chill for like a couple days here and there, you start getting these extreme readings and that'll be something we'll have to keep a watch on. Let's talk a look, let's take a look at the general watch list you know, we'll go from favorites to non-favorites, all right? So first of all, we want to add a couple names. So I want The big focus is always going to be right now the fine names that are sitting near bottoms, things that uh, have some short interest, that are unloved, untouched. That's the way we want to go with them, right? We've seen, we seen like kind of what's happens. Like we took this UPST uh, at the open here. Like this is like sick range, right? Like... I took the I took the calls on this and dude, the range on these things like even they when they move like two three percent the calls are moving fifty hundred percent and sometimes in minutes and so you got to this is this this is where we want to be playing this is the sandbox we want to play be playing in right so I think for tomorrow right this SPWR finally remounted over the fifty day moving average love that name look at this apps this thing used to be a hundred dollars it was the tour du jour for a long period of time right now we had a fake breakdown we're all coiled up breaking over the 50-day moving average man you got an uptick in volume here good range on this like that's the type of name that i want to be a part of right we got old cvna saved up saved by an upgrade today if you look here on a longer term basis you know we've got probably room into the 50s on this one and if you're even looking at a weekly chart here Right, you got a breakout curls for the girls breaking out over the MAs. Like that's something we got to be, dude. That's something we got to be totally a part of. I want you to add in a couple biotechs today, right? This VKTX uh, gapped up on a PR today. You're testing the 200-day moving average, but if you look here, like this was an old, oldie but goodie, right? It had an awesome trend in the beginning of the year from a couple bucks to 23. Now we've got this huge base, right? If we can clear over this 200-day moving average, I think that's going to be, man, that's going to be a lot of a lot of goodness, all right? Siri, dude, Cerevel Therapeutics. Look at this, like right off the gate, right? Pushed out, flag pattern, go. One thing when I'm doing my scans is it's not just like how the daily chart looks. What you really want to be doing, what you really want to be doing is looking and seeing like how a stock traded. Is it tradable? Like, is it moving and respecting the things that we watch, right? So you can see here, right? Pull back to the MAs, flag pattern, pull back to 90 MA, pull back to 20 EMA, right? These are the setups that, right, we do in boot camp class and we do in all these things. So when you see a stock respecting those kind of levels, that's huge. Like, we want to be a part of that. I still got IOT on the watch list. This is a big time breakout here. We had basically, I would count this as an inside day. Even though it kind of peaked its head for a hot second, it totally came back and just chilled out. I'd consider this an inside day here today. An inside day scan, you guys want to be running this every day, right? So you want to be running this every day because right now we're in the right market for it. So I'd be running an inside day scan literally every single day. All an inside day scan is is when you get a big push, then you get a tight range day after it. Those can often be... Like those can often be really, really good ones. So I added path beyond IOT. I consider that inside day minus that little, right, little nub. But I think path here, you can see here, big thrust, right, inside day. I think, guys, this probably goes, if the market's hot, I think that people probably push this thing 
right off at the open. So just kind of keep that in the mind. What's happening with these like hot little, hot little PR plays, especially ones that like got big time breakouts, they're getting pushed fast. Sometimes the first candle. So watch out with trades in the pre-market if it builds out a level or something like that. I think we're going to be good to go. I got W here. I consider this probably a, you know a in double inside day, right? So you had the big push, and then you got sideways, sideways, sideways. You're tightening up this flag right here. A weak open on this one. I think it probably does a move like kind of Etsy did, right? Where you get this like huge mamma jamma one of these days. I love the look of this. And if you ever think about like previous runs in the market, W always is like kind of that barometer of spec, right? Like that in CDNA, but this one typically moves more like 31 to 73. Then you got 35 to 90. Like this thing always does it. We want to be a part of that. Uh, IONQ, love this. I took a shot at it at the open, made like on the red to green here. It dipped down, went red to green. It pushed like 50 cents at, you know, in the first candle and then dumped down. It's basically like a little bit of a rest day here too, right? Narrow range day. I think this one, if the market holds, goes right off the bat. Love snow. So snow had earnings out. This is earnings day. Remember how powerful earnings breakouts are. So you had earnings day. Then you had inside day, inside day coming out of this. Look at this, right? You've got a huge level here. If it goes back, tap, 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 tap. The more times you test the level, guys, the more powerful it is. So you've got test, 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 test. you got to show and go right at the 193. This is like, this is another one because of the way that it moves. If you have a flat to weak open and the market is hot and the bigger tech stocks go, then this probably goes red to green right into breakout. So like you won't even, you've got to be when the market gets hot, you've got to be ready to strike. Sometimes in the first five, 10 minutes, I know it's a little bit scary. We're always taught to sit out the first 15, 30 minutes. I always consider that bullshit. You don't want to do that because that's where all the fun is. What you got to do is learn how to corral it, right? So watch this thing. Watch how it acts in the pre-market. A little bit of weakness, a little bit of flatness. You might get an MPC come right out of the gate. Guys, that, that thing's moving nice. I got a, a breakout here on AAY, a little bit of a rest day on this one right after such a big trend day, three points. You got a narrow range day after this. I think that one's ready to shred. Dash, we had this on our watch list yesterday. You know, this is a, this is what I mean by acting well. See how like it dumps off here and then it just hangs out the red to green spot. It just marinates, right? And then you start to push through. That's the kind of action you want to see. I think this one, if it breaks 100, Probably gets a little bit jiggy because you got all this room here. You don't have any resistance to like 130. That that thing's a shredder. And then let's just talk on the short side. We're gonna need a couple here, right? So a firm, any big gap on a firm, I think that we try to take this one, take this one down. I didn't take a shot at the short on this today. I didn't think it's ready. I'm looking for a speed up. You don't want to short grinders, right? Grinders, trenders, no. You don't want to get a and you don't want to do that because if you get in front of it, you'll get run over, right? You need a speed up. You need exhaustion before you try to shorten a hot market. If you see on the weekly chart, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, six weeks up, 95 statistics on the weekly. And you're kind of in a little bit of resistance. I wouldn't consider this much, but, you know, price has a memory and you're kind of into that spot. Watch for a gap up on this one. I think the same thing, right? If we get probably a little bit of a, a gap up on Etsy into the 200 day moving average, then you know we can look for a quick kind of counter trend short, maybe five, six points. And then the same thing, right? On coin, you know, this had an exhaustion gap today that dumped off and then it kind of just rebounded again. That's good though. You got the filled candle on this. This probably could get yanked if the situation with BTC stabilizes or just shows a little bit of weakness. You may get it yanked at the open. Um, obviously, if you look here, right at 70 bucks, you're up about 100% in a few days. This is the weekly chart, one, two, three, four, five, six straight weeks up, 95 stochastics. Now it's an awesome chart, right? On a, on a bigger term basis, awesome chart. I think that this thing, if you look, this is the weekly chart, right? Any kind of tap backs into that 115, 120, like you wanna be a part of that, right? You know, I think on a much shorter term basis as a daily chart, you would need still, right, 
you need some marination, but you need that pullback here if you're going to try to do this on a longer basis type of trade. And then one speculative little fun ball, old Fubo, right? Old Fubo is starting to perk its pickle here a little bit. You got a breakout setting up around 375. Keep that one on watch. Probably not. I'm not going to trade that one because the ATR on it's just going to be like 20, 30 cents. It's like, I always find when you do that, you got to oversize these things with like a huge amount of shares. And then you're kind of playing it for nickels and stuff because you got too many shares. I don't like that kind of stuff. But in general, we'll keep an eye on that. And then ARM. ARM, it dumped off at the open but still held the nine. That can happen sometimes as you just consolidate and build up the steam. We still got the spot here at 64. Keep an eye on this. You know, all it takes is a little bit of an upgrade, a little bit of, you know, maybe some fun in NVIDIA, and we'll be going. On the big cap side, just let's keep an eye on NVIDIA, right? You got yourself 50-day moving average, lower Bollinger Band, pretty oversold. We got Meta here, you know. That's been good. And then, you know, leave everything else alone. I don't think uh, I don't think we got to be too crazy with this. So moral of the story, we want to hit these big base breakout patterns. And then we got a couple of these big boys that are, you know, oversold. If you get any weak open and they kind of retest down into these zones, then we'll come back hot on them. Take care.